Hey, welcome to my channel, Ken here. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to listen and what to listen for and what kind of listening you're doing. So how are you listening? There's emotional listening, there's musical listening, and there's technical listening. So I've created a graph that you can see over here where I'm describing the different kind of listening. So what is emotional listening? Emotional listening is when you start out listening to music or sound design and so forth. You're kind of looking for an emotional impact. you listening for pleasure. You want to feel good or you want to feel something from listening. That's all emotional listening. Um, there is a trap for us professionals there because you can't be a victim of feeling good because then you won't listen for details or fixes and so forth and so on. Um, so we're all victims of feeling good listening to, let's say, a pair of speakers or a concert. Also, more bass and more treble usually means better or louder means better. And that's another emotional response that everybody has when they're listening to something. We're also looking for more lush sounds more punchy sounds. And that's also a trap if you're listening to it critically. So these are examples of traps that we have when we're mixing or tuning and, and listening for errors and noise identification, um, which is a completely different kind of listening that I'll get into in, in a short bit. Well, what's musical listening? Musical listening is when you're listening for the melody, harmony, uh, rhythms, tuning and intonation, uh, how instruments blend. Um, and other skills in musical listening is stuff like dictation, notation and takedowns, which means that you're listening to very specific note values and pitches. Um, we also listen to it musically when we're listening to reverberation and how it functions in reference to our sound of the instruments, for example, as opposed to what I'll get into with the technical. So musical listening is something we've been trained to do as musicians uh, from the very beginning and how we listen for harmony and pitches, rhythm, changes in tempo. Now technical listening is stuff we need to a great deal when we're listening to mixing, mastering, studio acoustics and issues in the recording like phase, distortion, noise. Um, and we're listening technically to something when we're listening to equipment characters, distortions and the colors that they impart on the signal. Um, but I want to interject this other little aside issue where we're listening to it as an audiophile. Because in essence, that's also a kind of a technical listening experience because we're listening for the illusion of reality. Meaning, if you have a symphony orchestra that's been recorded and you listen back to good enough system, it'll give you an illusion of a concert. Um, so that's kind of a technical issue and there's all kinds of technical issues that has to be solved in order for that to happen. Now, we also need technical listening when we're recording. We're listening for mic placements and distance from the source and how they blend and face issues. Let's say a snare drum when you have two mics on it, how those two mics interact with one another to get you the optimal sound quality. Speaking of the snare, we're listening for the resonance of the drum. We're listening for the tuning of the drum, which is more technical than it is musical because there's no real pitch here on your snare. Um, so you're listening to, to it very technically when you, let's say, you're dialing in a tone um, on your guitar amp, for example, and how the mic has to be, what the knobs have to be on the amplifier, how the playing is reflected through the whole signal chain, and how it ends up ultimately in the mix. Of course, the musical listening will be the pitch and the rhythm and how the instrument is being played. Now, 
I have some specific issues here that I want to get into um, that will affect all of the above, meaning both the emotional impact of your listening, the musical and the technical um, cognitive uh, ability that might impart your judgment of what things sounds like. Things like um, ear fatigue, um, the emotional state you're in when you're actually listening to something, the monitoring playback, uh, the room, um, how critic, self-critical if it's your own stuff are you at that moment in time? Um, are you more in a casual mode than you are in a critical analytical state? How trained is your cognizance ability to interpret what you hear in the proper way? All these things will lead you to the ultimate goal of making quick, solid, realistic decisions and where it eventually becomes do you trust what you hear? And how does it translate outside of your own environment when you're working? Critical things that will eventually make you very confident in what you do. And when you're confident in what you do and you trust what you hear, then you're in a very good place. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and please share my videos and I'll do more. Until next time, take care.